So, first of all, thank you very, very much for having me here because any time I can be out here to talk about what is really going on out on the streets firsthand, I'm on it. And I tend to bring my friends from the street so they can talk about what's going on out on the streets. And this is Terry. And she's a woman living homeless on the streets of Denver. And that's where we get all the information. So, my nonprofit was uh, established about, mm, about a year and a half ago with all libertarian donations. So this nonprofit is operating on libertarian principles and philosophy, okay? We want less government. We want more people to start recognizing that charity comes from private dollars and not government, okay? So how much leverage do we have with that out there? Not a lot because nobody likes it the truth. It's ugly, it's scary, it's polarizing, and you might actually have to talk to them if you really want to know what's going on out there. So everything you hear in the news and what the city of Denver is saying about the homeless just not taking resources, it's a lie. It's a bald-faced lie. And we know who owns the press. I can't get an audience that big, but boy, they sure can. But are they out there? No. No. I have to beg for volunteers. At this point, we always accept money. We're a 501c3. I've got all kinds of ways to donate. But I don't want your money. I want your help. <laughs> because I don't have enough volunteers. I'm one person. I need to replicate my efforts. And if I can get dedicated people to do that, the money can come later. It is the people that we need out there. If we are going to have an opinion about homelessness and how to address it, we better make sure we know what's going on. And I'm gonna tell you the government is lying about what's going on out there. All the federal dollars that came in during COVID, Denver wasted over a hundred million dollars and they just raised taxes again in Denver County to say, we need more money to solve this homeless issue. So what are they doing? They're sweeping them four days a week. Certainly you've seen that in the press, and most of those sweeps are occurring in downtown Denver. My nonprofit focuses mostly in southwest Denver. We don't want to be in downtown because most of the, those people have immediate connectivity to resources. The people that are living out in southwest Denver, like Terry, are more of the RV livers. Um, they're surviving in RVs, vehicles. We are seeing a massive influx of homeless, new faces every single day. And the moratorium, the eviction moratorium is going to end July, and, and, and this July, and uh, this winter, we are going to see something we've never seen before. People have no idea what's coming. There are families out there. I put an individual, a very sick, 60-year-old man who's living outside with congestive heart failure, who's falling, can't walk has cellulitis, his legs this big, he's probably had several mini strokes, he was in the hospital, they kicked him back out to the streets. Those are the people that Denver says that they're trying to connect with. They're not. They're not sending people out there to connect with people that have these immediate needs. <laughs> it's a lie. So I fill in where I can, and it's very minimal, because I can't, I don't have the funding for, for shelter, long-term shelter. We do it on a very urgent need, and that's, that's all we can afford. And I have a small handful of volunteers, less than five, that are willing to go out and connect with the homeless and um, see what they need. I never advocate for people to go out and do their, what is it, their Sunday tithing and just dump some stuff out there where there's a bunch of homeless people and drive away. That's the new thing. And let me tell you how many problems that's causing, because Denver is involved in, a, in another lawsuit on sweeping the homeless. There's an injunction right now with the city of Denver to not be enforcing the camping ban. Federal judge, Judge Martinez, has ruled that Denver still can sweep, but it has to be on a health and safety need. So Denver goes out and they say, look at all this trash. This is unsanitary. Of course it is. It's horrible. We should do much better than what we're doing with this sanitation issue. 
we are not a third world country. We let government monopolize trash service. So who do we have to take care of trash? The government. Who do we have to create a bigger problem with the trash? The government. <laughs> so you've got little nonprofits like me that spend money on bringing in toilets. We do cleanup days. They are also very willing to get their hands dirty and pitch in for some of the other assholes who are not so nice living out on the streets. And there are plenty of them. There really are. We are very candid out there. We're very honest with each other. We set goals. We hold, well, we certainly try to hold a lot of people accountable. We have our own hierarchy out there. And we've had some success with housing. Me, myself, I've housed three in the last year and a half. I'm one person. We're talking, the city of Denver has hundreds of millions of dollars. How can I get that done with no money? Well, it's because I take the time to get to know them. They're not going to do that out there. I met an individual who had been here for a while, a man, and uh, he was from Milwaukee. And I said, how did you end up here? Well, I was supposed to do this, I was supposed to do that, but it's not working out, blah, blah, blah. I'm waiting for my benefits to come in because Denver came out and they wanted to give me some food benefits. I said, well, did they talk about where you came from and maybe offer you a ride home? Did you want to go home? Yeah, yeah, I want to go home. I put that man on a bus and sent him home to his mother in Milwaukee. What did Denver do? They wanted to get him signed up for food benefits during COVID. I mean, come on. It's as simple as taking the time just to have some conversations with these people. And we can come together instead of demanding government fix this because there is no such thing as free housing for all. So I'm, I, I, wanna, I wanna introduce you to Terry and I want her to do some talking. I just want her to do it on a level that she's comfortable with. And if she wants to take questions from you guys, that she's, uh, she's very honest. She's, she's very candid and this is a safe group. This is, this is not a group that is here to, oh, really? Mm, mm, mm. They're not. And if they are, I'm gonna throw them out. <laughs> so, so this is Terry, and she agreed to come with me tonight, and I'm really thankful because it's hard. It's hard for them to tell their story, and we had a few of them at the uh, at the convention. I don't know if anybody Mark was in there, if anybody else was in that uh, breakout session where I brought four of them from the streets, and uh, they they gave a talk about their circumstances and, and Terry's what we would consider we call you chronic homeless right I mean you have had periods of being housed but what what took you out there Terry I got what stuck in a house fire it burnt me down when I was asleep I ended up homeless I got sold the property and I got burnt for the property so I'm owed like two hundred thousand dollars and I'm homeless how long ago 2015-16. Did you always, were you always housed up until that point? Yeah. So I'm you've been... Homeless. I got burned down my house while I was asleep. They tried to kill me with my property. They robbed me. So as a woman out here on the streets, um, yeah. It's What's it rough. like? It's been rough. It's not easy out here. It's really hard. Once you're out here, it's hard to get off the street. We've been through how many sweeps? Too many. Three, probably Too in the many. last, since last year. You got to start over and over when they do that. It's hard. So Terry was in a, Terry was living in a tent for quite a while, right? A long while. And then some guys showed up one day. Brought me a pop-up camper. I've been in it ever since. <laughs> like nine months now. Yeah. I'm having a hard time now too because I can't get illegal, so. That's the other big the thing. Other we have, we have no paperwork for it, so you're probably going to take that too. No, they're not. You don't think? Trust me. <laughs> no, I know they're not. And these are the things that I advocate for them out on the streets. I'm incredibly aggressive with the cops because these people have a right to survive. And if they're not hurting anyone else, can you just let us, we'll finish this and then we'll move into questions. I just want to give her an opportunity to kind of. So, the cops and I in Denver are starting to have a working relationship. 
Um, but it's been a long, hard road. And it's been a lot of me having to expose a lot of things that they're doing, having to file complaints on policy violations, them harassing the homeless, not using their body cams. So out in Southwest Denver, we have two police districts, three and four. The Platte River divides those two police districts at Broadway and, or at Evans and Santa Fe. And Denver, the mayor's office, schedules sweeps and then they sweep them from one side of the river to the other. Boop, 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 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So a sweep is where they come in post notice. This is part of the lawsuit. The injunction states that Denver has to give seven days notice before they sweep them. The problem with that notice is they don't have anywhere to go. So imagine if you will, you know, you've got your home set up there. Granted, there are plenty of opportunities to clean up. We're seeing pictures of horrible things piling up. It's wrong, it's horrible, but they let it get like that. The city allows that to go on so they can post that notice and say it's time to sweep these people so they can keep them moving. Instead of just coming in and cleaning it up, they make them move. So they move a block. It's hard. They, clean, they take everything that they can't move or that they leave behind and throw it away. They fence off the area, bring in trash, br the grabber tractors, pick it up, and drop it in the trash can. That's what they do. Who the trash truck? That's a, 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 an Everyone. amendment, a, a Fourth Amendment to violation to be securing your property, and that is why Denver's facing this lawsuit. I mean, this isn't the first time. Denver had a settlement in 2013. The court said, the federal court said, stop doing this. You're going to pay these people, every one of these people in this suit, 10 grand, and you're going to implement these changes. Denver didn't do it. They just continued to do what they want because Hancock's mission is since the voters said that we want an urban camping ban in Denver, that somehow magically just circumvents, you know, all of their rights. Well, it's not gonna work like that. And so this lawsuit's gonna stay in, in this federal court system for a long time. And we just it just got started and there are four people from my area that are plaintiffs in this lawsuit from the river sweep last fall. Terry was involved in that sweep. And so she was in a tent at the time and she was probably one of the only ones that was keeping her space clean. You want to see how how to do it right, come visit Terry anytime. It's the floor clean. I'm always cleaning up everything else. It's a pride thing, right? Yeah, of course. That's just how I am. Yeah. And, and you know, so they have to work together. But the city, they, they just, it's constant harassment. Okay. Every day, every day we get harassed every day. Where's the cops there today? Not, yeah, they're probably not one day they don't come by. There's like two cars going by today. But they, but they just do it because they know that eventually they're going to call me if anything gets stupid. They're just making their rounds because people are calling and complaining, right? So the cops go out there, you have to move, and they go, okay. District, our district is way different than downtown on how on how the police are handling it. The Denver Police Department districts one through five, and they're all operating differently. And the police shouldn't even be involved. This is not a criminal issue. This is a health crisis issue. It's a public health issue, and we're trying to address it criminally. So uh, Denver's going to find themselves in a world of hurt this winter because. The population is increasing dramatically. Colorado is unique in that it really is one of the only states where you'll find the homeless living in these RVs. But again, you can't license it because you don't have the paperwork, you don't have a driver's license, you don't have the things that she needs to get that licensed. You know, the permission that we ask government so they can live. So she's been in the same spot for quite a while and the cops, they'd like to use an ordinance to tell them that they have to move every 72 hours because there's an ordinance in Denver that you can't stay parked in one spot. Every two days, like 100 feet. So I found the loophole. Crazy. The loophole in that ordinance is that they can move 100 feet. So, you know, if the cops want to get stupid, we'll play their game. We'll go out and play musical RVs for a while. And uh, you know, that's how it goes. What do you think, Harry, talk about the chances of you getting housing. How, what would that look like? chances of six or eight. I don't see no chance of getting on the street if I die first. How old is she? 58. I turned 58. She is, she is one of what I 
start to put into the category of some of the, well, you're not elderly, but <laughs> we have, we have a, a large faction of people in this age bracket. And we're all 65, about 70, I think mean, we got a 73 year old man out there. Keith was there. He's with, got his hands rolling twice this week. Yep. Yeah, his, so his, his quality of life has diminished. If any of you listen to Keith's talk, I wish he could have been here tonight, but he's broken his arm and some thieves have stolen That's his on, vehicle. One, one. Uh, he, he is legal uh, with his van on the street. He's, he's a veteran. He pays his insurance, um, but he can't get housed because of his criminal history. Keith will never he, get housed. Huh? Yeah. I, on I, drugs. I, own my, I own property pretty quick before I get out there. War on drugs. It's going to keep them on the street because even if they do get some assistance, they don't qualify for housing because of their, of their criminal history. Yeah. Drug felonies, you get to live on the street. So we have a crisis and it's getting bigger. So are you comfortable with questions now? Sure. Yeah. Who's got questions about Go ahead. Uh, and I know this is kind of a hard number to kind of predict, but how many people that you run into actually have jobs that are living on the street yeah living on the street and have jobs. a lot of them yeah what what of now what kind of job is the is the is the topic of conversation here what's your idea of a job where you go to put a hair down add, and take care of it. Well, bad, yeah. <laughs> no the answer to that is no terry works i work part-time as much as i can anyway what do you do? I do paint. I do anything I can. So I paint, paint houses. I do a lot of things. Huh? Because I work at a warehouse, I haul that out of the warehouses. I do a lot of stuff. Whatever I can to make it all work. You should have to work under the table. Oh well, yeah, I can't get a regular job. So you receive money by cash without any. Uh, oh, cash, I have to. So no 1099, no W2. Not anymore. Just in cash. Not anymore. Why? Yes. I don't have no address, I can't get a job. Yeah. Oh. Is it, is it that? Is it just the address? Like, you can't use the Yeah, my criminal history, a lot of things hold me back my age. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry, I know in Denver there are shelter. Uh, shelter so, bad. I'm sorry, can you get that post added from a shelter and receive a uh, post uh, to the shelter and because of that it has some kind of ID and everything like that? Like getting like some wraparound services at a shelter? Uh, I'm sorry, from getting my help? Uh, I had experience, uh, I was a volunteer in um, Marion uh, uh, Soup Kitchen in uh, Colorado Springs. Okay. I know many uh, homeless people uh, were going there and they received address from that place. So people actually didn't live there, but they were able to receive a post uh, mail. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, because of that, they were able to say, it is my official address, so you can send me any letter. Yes. And uh, because of that, you have address, and you can able to start working with what the address. This is my address. There are, there are shelters here. Uh -huh. um, Denver's shelter system doesn't let them use that as a mailing address, but the St. Francis Center, there is a, a, a nonprofit. Uh, Father Woody's Giving Heart down in Inglewood allows them to use that as a mailing address, which that's fine, but that's not the bulk of the no barriers. There's no shower, there's no clean clothes, there's, no, there's a lot of things that go with this transportation. So, a lot of people don't have money to take the bus every day. You know? So what is the biggest uh, issue you cannot report to get a job and then get some kind of housing? So I'd say shower, clean clothes, and transportation, and cars. For me, you know, to do a job is because of my record. Criminal history, number one. Okay. So, you know, whatever. We can argue that, you know, their criminal history has, you know, put them on the streets forever. Okay, what are we going to do about it? We change and it still don't matter, you know. A lot of these people have done their time. Else. They are off paper. They have served their sentence. But instead, They've got a life sentence for the street. It's been 15 years since I've been in trouble, and I still can't get off the street. How smart is that? Just give me a job, and I can clear my record. So is there a designated area that you can go, like you can put your car there, and then that area you're allowed to stay in? There ain't really no place to go, man. 
So wouldn't that be an effective solution if they say, here's 100 square acres and you can just go live here? Well, they can chat, though. It's empty out there. They can put it out there, but they yeah. can't. Okay. Can't park. So, so I'm glad you brought that up because uh, there's the safe outdoor parking initiative now. <laughs> this, is funny. this is a joke. Of course, you have to ask them for permission as a church to even use your parking lot to allow that. And then they'll give you some zoning variances with some requirements like they have to pass a background check. They have to have a car with license and insurance and registration. So Denver has had filling their safe outdoor parking spaces and they're for cars only. So we have a camp out by the CDOT lot. Uh, some of you can go to my YouTube channel, it's rated R, but you can see <laughs> what's going on out there. You can see the big wide open spaces that CDOT owns that the state could give up, that the city could advocate to get from the state, yes, that could be property. managed by nonprofits. Uh -uh. Yes, we were property. we were highly effective with our trash with our trash program out there because I was getting trash bags from the city of Denver and I was putting enough pressure on them to come pick up the trash and they were doing it and it was working so well they had to stop doing that. Stop doing it. I'm not kidding. It's unreal. It's unreal. We still call for trash pickup. Yeah, so we call three one one. You know, hey. Uh, we got our trash all bagged up over here. We're waiting for you to come pick it up. Natalie. They don't like us very much. We could make that happen. You're asking what the what the next barrier would be, right? Right, because I don't see the jobs. I mean, there's just, there's so many businesses they can't even get people to work the dam. Right. Because like we talked about R rated, it's freaking stimulus. Mm -hmm. It's really hurt the job market. It's not turned us into a welfare type mm -hmm. mentality. So the jobs are out there. I tried to go to work for Parks and Rec, and now or Parks and Wildlife, and they wouldn't hire me because I have felonies. I have four felonies actually. They wouldn't hire me. They didn't want me working with public. Okay. But if we could take someone like you and maybe two others and we went and found someone, uh, a business, you know, willing to overlook all that to get you on paper. I'm not scared to work. We'd have, we, we'd have, Natalie, they'd have to have their social security cards. They'd have, I mean, we're talking social months. Card, I haven't seen we're talking months down the road. I've been trying to get social security cards. It ain't happening. I haven't gotten anybody's. They don't even have, they don't even have Okay, let's say we get through all that and we can make that happen. What's the next barrier? I don't know. No, no. So you, if, if you had to take two people with you from the street right now and you guys went to a job every day, what would be a barrier from making that happen? Transportation, it would be showers, clothes. A lot of us don't have clothes. A lot of us don't have no shower. It's hard to go to the bathroom out here. It's hard to get water. It's hard to do anything. It's a constant trouble out here for us. Water, it's, it's hard to get water. I mean, I've been after a bottle of water for two days. <laughs> I haven't seen anything. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, Natalie, if... And, and you are not allowed to build stay in shelter? Shel shelters are pretty full. Sorry? Shelters are full. Okay. Denver is really not honest about their shelter capacity. No. Furthermore, this group out in southwest Denver, they will not shelter. Tell them I why. Won't, I won't. There's Tell dead them bugs, why. there's bites, there's people stealing from you, there's no privacy, there's nothing. There's okay. nothing. Okay. Halted. There's <laughs> bed bugs for one. You know? There's a lot of problems in shelters. A lot. A lot. There's a lot, a lot of people, there's a lot of, a lot of everything. 
Are the shelters less safe than, than the yeah, street? Yeah, they are. So I've had people, to, 10 below, when we got down to 10 below, I had two people left out on the street that wouldn't let me put them in motels because they didn't want their stuff to get stolen. I mean, they're serious about protecting their stuff. They'll stay out in 10 below the front. Downtown, not so much because a lot of those people that aren't in tents are on the move. So yes, they have to go to shelters. So. Um, the recent influx with the border, how has that affected the The recent what? Influx from the border. You know, uh, or, or what do you mean? We're talking about illegal immigration? Where we, all the people that are coming in supposedly at the border. So, at the United States border or just for the yeah. state? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, we're not seeing yeah, anything out there. Okay. No, most of most of our our population is stable. We have newcomers that have yeah recently become homeless, and the more they sh try to shift them out of downtown, they're moving out to Southwest Denver. So yeah, we don't really. You know, we're not There's a lot of homeless people out there. Yeah. So the population numbers are fairly. So they, they're fairly stable, or they're increasing? They're, they're, they're increasing. They're, 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 they're increasing. There's no place to put nobody, so we're everywhere. But as far as being illegal, no. I so, so most uh, homeless people are citizens of the United States. They are not uh, illegal immigrants. Oh, I don't see no, it's not really. Have you ever met any immigrants no. out there? No. It's illegal, so I don't. Yeah, and I've helped them process. I'm called out a native, but I'm homeless. Yeah, that's the other thing. That's our thing natives, our natives, you've got to get their ID at DMV. They don't recognize the thumbprint or the fingerprint. They send them to, to this thing called the ID project. Remember Cowboy? I think ever, it was some, four months. We're waiting for his ID. He's had a car out driver's license. He's had a car out ID. He's a, a car out native in Inglewood. And the DMV just can't find him. They can't find me either. Can't get me. Please help. <laughs> Their fingerprints change. Living it's out hard. on the street. It's hard. It's hard. So we can't get them IDs. This is it's crazy out here. Russ, Russ, go. Families. There's there's a lot of families out there right now in transition and they're hiding because they're scared because they don't want social services showing up. Their kids are in their car or their RVs. I've helped some of them. Um, I want to help. I want to get in with those people right away. I want to make sure that they're okay with their kids out there. And if they're okay, we've had a lot of kids out here. When so the moratorium is going to lift in July? No, I don't. I mean, we're just there's only a couple of us nonprofits out here, and we're just bracing. We're talking about it every day. We know we're going to just get hit, and we're going to tell people, no, we can't come help you. I this is it's very hard. It's very very hard. This one kind of sounds kind of strange, but it's like, is housing the problem? Like, if you, we could just build, like, 3D print an apartment building or whatever that, you know, has, you know, like, you know, something like, you know, like a tiny house. I would kind of think like micro apartment and stuff. Would that solve this problem? No. I know that may kind of sound weird because we're talking about homeless. It seems like it would, but I kind of wonder. No. It, it, because, and I'm going to let Terry comment on that because she's the one that could describe to us best why some people will never get housed. There's a lot of reasons. Drug habits, their, their backgrounds, 
Even if they were if, if they were offered that, Terry. Well, what are you gonna put in? No, let's no, let's say it exists. No, no, let's just say it exists, and we said to someone like Phil, 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 here's a house for you. Not many, many stable for it. You can have it. He'd probably burn it down. Yeah. There's a lot of people out here, out here that have mental issues that really couldn't even survive on their own out here really half the time. I mean, how they make it. They have no, no, no money keeping skills. Denver has had some success out in Southwest Denver giving the police department some extra money to help get people housed. So they hired people that didn't know what they were doing and they went and found a couple people on the street. This man said, yeah, I want to be housed. Well, he has social security income. So yes, he can find housing if he can find a place to take him. And they did all this legwork and they got this all set up and they talked about it on Facebook. This was a huge success story because Denver Police Department got somebody off the street the guy's getting evicted because he went and spent a bunch of money on cable. He didn't pay his rent. Come on. A lot of these people this, don't know it's how to true. Go about. That's what I'm getting at. That's exactly. what I'm getting at. If you gave them something and said, okay, look, this comes with a basic set of rules. There's a lot of people Some that of them deliberately don't, don't want to follow them. Yep, they don't follow rules actually. Some of them want to deliberately be drifters and dumpster dive because that's the life they know. You would be amazed the survival skills from 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 dumpster diving. From just they find the most incredible things out there. Yep. And that's their life. That's how they survive. And when you give them a place and you say, look, you can't you can't bring all your treasures home. They're gonna go, all right, I'll just stay out here. They are. Someone's There's good. a lot of them. Hoarding is a real thing because it's about survival. The homeless hoarders are a problem. Some of them are a problem. Some of them are a big problem. That's why the sun is off the cover. <laughs> I have one more question. When you do, when you talk about the sleep, that is like an order that comes from the mayor, yep. and they tell the police to yep. get out there and just move these people. The police come out and oversee the trash crew that brings two tractors in. So mainly they're, when they say sleep, they're talking mainly to trash. So everything. And you have so everything. everything that you said you everything. Work, everything goes. Everything. Clothes, they, everything. Blankets, everything goes. I was going to say, like you, you had something you had organized some of the people that are, you know, <coughs> willing to do it to clean up the area. Yep. And then maybe work with the police, but they still don't want to hear it. Yeah, well, it's not, it's, it's a police, you know, they're not going to honor their oath. They're going to do what they're told. So we had very success, a, a lot of success doing that. And we have a good friend in the fire department that is at every sweep, and he tells us what's going to go down. He's really on our side. He's about fire safety. We've had some guy. deaths out here. People have died. They've um, started some fires yeah. accidentally, um, carelessly. So that's a big, big topic of conversation out on the streets. I just lost one of my friends. Yeah, we, Mike, um, earlier this was right in he front of her. He in front of me and he ended up blowing himself up with a propane tank about that big, about 40 gallon tank. He was filling another tank inside the van and I guess he had to handle it and he goofed it out and he was stuck in a ball of fire. And he lost him. And he made it out of there and came to her for help. But he ended up dying. She didn't have a phone and she couldn't get the one person up that had a phone and so she had to go a block down to find somebody that had a phone and they didn't want to call 911 because they were mad at the guy that was on fire. He was down the sidewalk the whole time, following me the whole time. He on was, fire. He was just gone. And yeah, he was, was in ICU was for a long time and he passed away. Was and uh, so the fire department and I, we have a wonderful working relationship. And so we do work on the issues that could uh, be potential fire hazards. And we do real well together. No one do well. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the cops, you know, I mean, they're just following orders. So are there any government programs that will go out and help? I know a lot of people have, you know, issues. Yeah, there's a million of them. That will go out and, and try to, you know, work with these people and their whatever drug problems or whatever and place them? What they or do is they come out and offer their services and then you never see them again. They don't try to place in a job somehow or anything, job placement. They would have to give us a ticket. I'm sorry. What do they do? Terry, honestly, they what do they do? They come out and give us the resources that aren't going to help us. I mean, 
And then these kids are going to be after two weeks and we never see them. <coughs> I worked real close with Terry because... If it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't have no hope. I, I try to hold the resources that are out there. They are subsidized by government. And I have to hold them accountable to following through. Terry needs a lot of medical. She's, she, it's, it's, once she gets her medical stuff under control, things are going to really get a lot better for her. And, but she has no transportation. So Colorado Co Coalition for the Homeless has a clinic. It's called the Stout Street Clinic. But they have to get down there. So we finally got a caseworker that provides the transportation person. The transportation person and I talk about her appointments because Denver Health's medical system, that's another nightmare, but let's not talk about that. But so these the, these resources, all these government programs, there's no accountability. It's taken me two months to get an appointment to do this. Okay. Every appointment I need is usually two, three months out. Yeah, it sounds like the government resources, because there's money somehow there, but it doesn't get to <laughs> where it's supposed to go, which would be, yeah, I mean, so, but the people aren't holding government accountable. So why should they I have think to a be? a lot of people, they don't realize that. So that's why you're out here speaking, and that's good. Yep. Um, and I've worked with some of those government programs, and I'm looking at these people going, you're getting paid to do this? I mean, we've had some serious blowouts out there on the street, and I have told people to get lost. You're worthless. And she can attest to that. So... It, the, these programs are not functioning. Have you partnered with any churches that have helped? Uh, no, we don't have any in the area that have any interest. Do we have random people that stop and drop off food that we can't use most of the time? No, the, the, the That's church where the trash problem comes from. Yeah. People are trying to help, but they're bringing all the wrong things. Like some of those can't cook, you know, and they'll drop off potatoes, they'll drop off you know, onions. onions. Things that didn't Stuff we can't use. things that didn't get picked up in their church, we'll just take it out to the homeless. They and just drop it off and eat it. That's what we have out there in South Lake. We have people dump the trash off just to make us look bad. Illegal dumping. People will take their furniture. Just dump it. Just dump it. Just dump it. Everything like they're right before that. Because they can blame them. We, yeah. Mia. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like one of the problems that you're describing is that like the bureaucracy of all these organizations is really getting in the way of people being successful. That's between like criminal records or identification and like their necessary or blocking the necessary paths that people need like because they're also interdependent um so like in a perfect world if you if you were to tell the government what to do or like what they need to change or eliminate what would what changes would you like to see in order to help people like Terry to give me the money successful? and get out of here <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding there is nothing working give me the money that's why we operate, we don't ask for permission. If they want to work with me, they can ask me. Otherwise, get out of my way. They've threatened to criminalize me. They've, they've taken my porta potties. They've done all kinds of stuff. I play their game, and I, I've won pretty much every time. So we have a toilet out there. Which does. They, we have a toilet out there that has a, it's, it's street legal. We put it on a trailer because they kept playing this stupid game. That and we booted it. And we put boots on it so they couldn't tow it or pick it up or anything. I mean, this thing is locked down. And it's been out there for months, and they haven't said a word. Because they kept taking my clothes off the street telling me that I was violating blah, 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 or this, blah, blah, blah. And at the ACLU defended me on that. They have a plate on it, huh? Well, this tra this tra now this trailer is plated. And we hook it up to the truck, and we'll move it if we need to move it. I'm in the process of buying another one. But she's by the toilet. 69-year-old Zaina is by the toilet. 73-year-old Keith is by the toilet. We have so, folks home right there. I've called out my security zone. I can go visit all my people. So, all the old people are right there. But the cops will come and say, oh, you guys got to move. You know, and then, yesterday. And, and, and I'll call them. The two community resource officers, I, one of them I sent to internal, internal, internal affairs three times. Uh, he got tired of that. So he decided that he wanted to start working with me. I said, you keep doing this, we're not going to get along. You want to work together if there's a problem, then we can solve it. I make no excuses for the trash or criminal behavior of people hurting other people. I make no excuses That's a for big that. Thing out there too. Yeah. Yep. It's, um, and the police don't investigate criminal activity against the homeless. 
They just don't do it. They get police calls for the homeless. They usually take their time telling. If if they come. So there, it's a total. The inequity is huge. It's huge. Uh, as I go to have some hidden history, do you have experience to live in prison? Do I have experience to do what? Life do you have experience prison. to live in prison? I went to prison. So, what is your comparison between life on street and life in prison? Life in prison sucks. Why it's uh, worse than uh, than live on the street? Because many of us were told in what in the prison you have housing, you have food. Uh, you have some kind of job, and uh, you have some kind of security. Yeah, you got protection, you got all that. Sorry? I wouldn't want to be in prison. So, I don't want to go back to prison. I don't want to go back to prison. I want to go back to prison. I'm homeless. Talk about the freedom scale of that. We don't have no freedom out here. Yeah, in prison? In oh, prison, oh, you yeah. do not have uh, freedom, certainly. But what kind of freedom you have on street? You cannot have normal job. It's a problem for you, it's for transportation. Uh, police uh, harasses you every time. So I cannot say that you Some people go to back to jail in the wintertime just to stay warm. Okay, so at the winter time, maybe prison is a better than life on street. Yes, for some people. Okay. Some people do choose that way, but I wouldn't. So what is the, what, what, uh, why you like uh, life on street is better than what, uh, what is your benefit? There's no benefit on either one of them, really. So I'm not trying to be homeless either. <laughs> I'm not trying to be locked up, and I'm not trying to be homeless. It just went around here, just kind of stuck. Are you implying that she's choosing this? It's, um, yeah. I'm sorry, I have also a very difficult situation. Okay. But, uh, can't be a different one. Uh, I just uh, trying to understand uh, what can be a solution uh, for people who sometimes have mental issues, uh, people uh, whom uh, other people don't want to hire because they're afraid of their criminal history, their reputation, and so. And uh, I thought maybe not a prison a solution, but system like a prison. Like when government provides housing, provides some kind of protection, uh, and very strict rules if you violate them. I'm sorry, maybe it's stupid, but uh, what? Well, first of all, this is America, so yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> we we have a lot of conversations about um, government rounding up the homeless and forcing them uh, into uh, places help. they don't want to be. Okay. That's not going to happen. However, the the Republican chair of Denver is running this uh, resolution. To, uh, is it on the ballot? Do we know? Did it make it? Did it get enough signatures? Do you know, Natalie? <laughs> well, you should pay attention to this one because this is a Republican <laughs> saying that he wants so. to. Yeah. It, did it make it? I'm pretty sure it did. Yeah. That he wants to empower the citizens of Denver to be able to sue the government if Denver doesn't start addressing the homelessness issue. But in the language of this, Denver city government is to go out and round up all of the homeless and put them in seven camps. First of all, seven camps is not going to house 6,000 homeless 11, people. 6,000 6, is a low number right now for, this, for the city of Denver. Denver was saying 3,000. The advocates, we, we were keeping our, our numbers, but we, we project 10,000 by next year. And if they don't go to these camps, they are to go to jail. That's the system you're proposing. Oh, okay, what is wrong with that camp? What is wrong with that? Yes, what is with the camp? What is wrong with the camp? So they're called safe outdoor spaces. Okay. Right now. And this is what they're trying to replicate. And churches are saying we want this in our in our parking lot, and they have to go to the city and ask the city for permission. And the and the city says sure, but here's all your variances. Uh, you're going to do this, 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 and that, and we're only going to give you this space for six months, and then you have to move it because we're not going to have this sitting here for any longer than six months. So there are two outdoor spaces, safe outdoor spaces right now. 
the, the Denver's trying to say there are three. There aren't. They closed that one, moved it out to Regis, and then opened another one in Park Hill. We have two safe outdoor spaces that house 38 people each. They had to take all those people from the current one, move them to that one, so we have one safe outdoor space that serves 38 people. Denver is not interested in any kind of solution. So those people can go there. Um, there really aren't a lot of uh, rules. There is a woman that's running that uh, from another nonprofit. She's getting paid to do that. They don't have a curfew. Uh, they can't bring stuff that's not allowed. Um, there's no open air drug or alcohol use. So, you know, you can still be an addict uh, because there are a lot of addict problems out on the street and you can't just pluck an addict and say you need to go over there and you're not doing drugs. It just doesn't work like that. And so there are people out here that you're not going to be able to force until you address the public health issue. The government well, tried to hide not, it from you guys. I didn't say that right. They don't want the public to know there's homeless people out there. That's why they try to hide it. They don't want people to know we're out there. So well, as a solution, we could get government out of the way and not have to ask for permission to get an ID, to have a social security card. We could partner with employers that want to hire them on a regular basis. Us, the people, could do those things instead of saying, we want the government to use force. We're not into that. But I'm sorry, you hold, up, hold on, let's, let's move on. Anyone else, two other questions. Claire, and then one more question after that. <laughs> Claire, you can ask two questions, and then last question in the back, and then, and then we'll, we're going to move on. Great. Okay, um, so I imagine that there are some um, homeless individuals who are violent and dangerous against other homeless individuals primarily. Is that right? Um, yeah. Yeah, there is. So, so then you and your, let's say, four volunteers that you have, you say the best way is to connect with homeless people. How do you manage the risk to your own security when you don't know if you're going to encounter someone who's violent? That's a great question. I have never one time. That was a good question. I take that back. I had one incident. Um, she threw a knife at me. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a, of a different mindset on that because I'm into my own self protection. I don't have problems with self protection. I'm still I think the homeless people have problems with that. More than she does. <laughs> the homeless have problems with each other. We more. do. We hate each other. And even we're having a good time. We, we homeless people can't stand each other. I'm telling you, we have a hard time out there. When nobody's having fun, nobody's enjoying themselves. The family Constant dynamics. Battle. It's it's family dynamics, and Terry is incredibly independent, and that's everything I love about her. And she doesn't put up with a lot of BS out there with people trash and things and into a lot. causing problems and and so fa Terry's family is tight where some of our other camps are bigger um, but they have more problems with each other being physical than volunteers. So you and your volunteers have not really encountered danger? Almost got ran over before I came here. From <laughs> by another homeless individual, not by me. <laughs> no, um, we don't. They also have, they have a keen awareness about um, when it's appropriate to <coughs> be on your best behavior, and I record a lot. Yeah, That's the, the other thing. I'm big about recording in public, and some of them get mad at me, but look, you are in public, guys. You have to remember, you have no expectation of privacy in public. And we do a lot of video, and we talk about stories. Some of them want it. You know, so I, I, I think I've, I've secured safety for this nonprofit pretty pretty well. Okay, and my second question was um, when you were talking about some people that even if they had a shower, clothes, and a job, they still like wouldn't want to be housed. So some of them what do you, a lot of people out here don't want to be housed. Yeah, what do you think is the percentage between people that like if they had all that they would be housed? I think it, it. I think it would be pretty small, okay. but it would be, it would be an important small percentage of people that need 
that extra support. I, I think it would be a small percentage that would maybe take the housing. If we were talking percentages, yeah. they're out there. Um, there are some serious addicts that are probably going to have to just be given some space <coughs> to live out their time. I've had zero success in getting yeah, anyone. Yeah, they're out there because of habit. They're not going to go anywhere else. <coughs> I've had zero success getting anyone. And I've had a tiny, tiny, small fraction of people have. And some of them are asking so they can take advantage of getting shelter. Because I do have, we have, we have the shtick on how to get people into rehab. Me and another city partner. We're good. We're really good. The rest of the city, they fail. And all our people know that out there. And heroin is a, it's a big deal. It's keeping a lot of people crazy out here. A little blue pill and heroin. Terry's not a heroin user. I don't need drugs. I told pot that too. That's how it's keeping me out here. My health right now. But it's hard to get off the street when you travel, man. I've been out here going on five years, it's too long. You're it's too just long to be out here. Behind the eight ball. It's you rough. know, one 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 thing that goes wrong, you know, think about the things that go wrong in your life, even being housed and how long it takes to get caught up from something. We have a traumatic sweep and everybody's stuff is blown up from here to eight blocks that way Everywhere. because we don't have anywhere to move these people. Everything that we have accomplished and all the work we're doing, it stops. And it takes a good month for me be, to be able to pick back up with my people to have the right frame of mind to get them to focus. It's so, like a hundred of us, huh? So, so we could, we're gonna get swept in, in the, in the, in the cul-de-sac and Cowboy is gonna be a mess for a month and I'm not gonna get anything done. I just have to let it happen. This is the city partnering with me, the nonprofit who's out here putting people in motels. I'm the one taking them to DMV. I'm the one doing this, that, this and that. And they're out here sweeping my people. It's pissing me off. It's gotta stop. So here's what's gonna happen. And I'm gonna end it this. It's frustrating for us. August 5th, there's gonna be a major sweep. And it's in this cul-de-sac at Wesley and Gallopago. It's in the area of Broadway, of Evans and Santa Fe. Okay, and I'm done. I'm gonna. I'm going for the revolutionary move, and I'm going to set up a tent, and I'm not leaving. And yeah, two others have. Here. Two others have said, I'd actually have three. If you do it, that's. If yeah. that's. If you do it, that's four. We're not moving. I'm done. I'm, I'm done with this. I have done Denver so many favors and have been so disrespected. And we actually bag our trash and put it in a pile and have our trash picked up. We do good things. And I'm done. So on August 5th, we're either all gonna go to jail or the city's gonna give up and walk away or we're all gonna end up with criminal citations. Mental problems. <laughs> if I'm the only one that doesn't come out of that tent, I will be the last man standing. I am not coming out of my tent because I, could be two weeks away from being right there. And these are my people. Everybody could be two minutes away from them. I mean, I wasn't homeless when I got out here. One traumatic I event I was homeless life. before I came out here. It's, uh, my whole life changed it overnight. And then that house fire just really messed me up. And became homeless because of my house. I had my house really clear and I don't have nothing now. One traumatic event. Your spouse dies. I mean, people don't want to face that reality. So. That's, that's where we're at. I, um, if anybody wants to come out on the streets and, and chat with them, they love it. We have, we have good times out there. We, we have some- There's not all bad people out here. Community meals. People. We have a mutual respect about how things, how things go. Yeah, there's rotten people, but there's a lot of good people too. They have a right to survive. Not everybody's all messed up on drugs. Some of them are, but. You can see some really, really sad heroin kids out there that are just messed up. Kids. Really kids. kids. So. Anything else? Oh, we could talk forever. <laughs> <laughs> we will end it there. Uh, please give it up for Regan and Terry. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Uh, Matthias von Gutenberg will be talking about the social psychology of influence. So hope to see everyone there. Uh, drive safe, have a good night, and keep fighting the state. Okay, appreciate it.
So here's the letter to her if anybody wants any. And yes, we 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 love your donations. Have a good night, guys.